Welcome. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss, we will continue the LD steel making and here we will discuss the oxygen lens, jet action and decarbonization. So, first we will discuss about the lens characteristics. Uh, oxygen lens has a special, especially the nozzle is very special, I need to know about that. And then we will talk about the jet action and that is the interaction of the oxygen jet with the metal bath. And, uh, that interaction we need to understand that is called the jet action and obviously a very important reaction called decarbonization. Decarbonization not only that is the reducing the carbon in LD process, decarbonization also has a role to play because uh, decarbonization basically produces in situ CO and uh, in the slag and that basically forms the foam as I just discussed and the emulsion it stabilizes the foam as well as the emulsion. So, decarbonization has a very important role um, in LD steel making because uh, the decarbonization has to continue to the end such that you can keep the foam and emulsion stabilized to the end of the process because in the emulsion already you have a tremendous surface area in the slag metal interfacial area and where kinetics is because first because of that. So, decarbonization reaction has a very special importance into LD steel making. Okay, now, let us first discuss with the oxygen lens. You can see this is the oxygen lens and oxygen comes to this annular portion and you can find here basically the schooling arrangement is there. Basically, you have water flow uh, one inlet and outlet such that the nozzle driven schools and another feature is that you can find. So, you can see that uh, yeah and nozzle also there is a special nozzle is there it is not a cylindrical nozzle you can find there is a convergent section and there is a divergent section it is convergent and divergent this way the nozzle is actually if you see it here yeah. this type of thing somewhat uh, here if we draw it okay uh, this is the convergence section it is the throat it is called the throat and this is the divergence section divergence so gas comes like that and go out so the nozzle it is a special nozzle this is the convergent initially it is convergent you can see from here also initially it is convergent this area uh, here here it is converging and then again diverging nozzle you can find so this type and there is a throat also in between the cylindrical portion and then it is diverging. So, this type of nozzle it is also called the D level nozzle right ok. So, use is a convergent divergent nozzle and also called the D level nozzle because a cylindrical nozzle uh, because we need to uh, <coughs> you can see here is supersonic jet is forming basically by convergent divergent nozzle we can accelerate the gas to a supersonic speed that is the speed greater than the speed of the sound right. So, that is called the supersonic speed we can uh, pushes the air at a very high velocity and pushes the oxygen at a very high velocity from this nozzle. But in case of if I use a cylindrical uh, cylindrical nozzle then I cannot push the oxygen at a very high velocity. What happens is that in case of the cylindrical nozzle what happens the gas because if you push the gas at a very high pressure, you have to give a very high pressure at the upstream point and when the gas come out, it also come out at a very high speed, a very high with pressure. So, from cylindrical nozzle when the gas is coming out, it is expected that it will come out with a very large pressure. So, and the ambient, so what happens, this is the large pressure oxygen jet then interact with the uh, one atmospheric ambient air, right. And as a result, most of the energy get dissipated in the form of shock waves, what is called the shock waves in case of the cylindrical uh, nozzle. But in case of the convergent divergent nozzle, because of this design, when the gas is come out from here and the pressure of the gas, there is the pressure of oxygen when it is coming out of the diverging section, it can be controlled to one atmospheric pressure by proper design of the length and divergent section length and all these things, you can um, 
get a very high speed, very high speed oxygen jet emerging out from the nozzle at an atmospheric pressure. As a result, it will not interact with the uh, ambient air and the oxygen will accelerate with the same speed in the supersonic speed. So, supersonic jet will come out at around 1 atmospheric pressure. So, the jet will progress through the atmosphere. Obviously, it will enter in the uh, surrounding atmosphere uh, like this. Okay. So, this is the advantage. So, you have you are basically using a convergent divergent nozzle and that has the capability of accelerating the oxygen or, or, or producing an oxygen jet at supersonic speed. And when the gas will come out of the convergent divergent nozzle, its pressure is almost equal to the ambient pressure. That is why the interaction with the atmosphere is not very uh, large. As a result, shock wave generation is not possible here. So, your energy distribution is not there. But when the you know, when such high pressure oxygen jet, when the when the oxygen, uh, if, if you want to produce the oxygen jet through a cylindrical nozzle, and they will come out with a very high pressure and oxygen will come out high pressure and it will dissipate it energy uh, by shock wave generation. So, this is the thing, it can accelerate the gas to a supersonic speed through the atmosphere. That is the most advantage of this using this divergent, convergent divergent nozzle. And some characteristic of the oxygen jet you must see. First thing is that supersonic core Mach number is 2.5. What is this Mach number? Mach number is velocity of the oxygen jet divided by the velocity of the sound and that is 2.5. That is the velocity of oxygen jet is 2.5 that of the velocity of the sound, right. So, supersonic core that is also not then, then when the oxygen is coming out from here, its velocity is supersonic velocity and find you can this is called the supersonic core. Why? Because when the oxygen jet is moving through the atmosphere, it entrains lot of air into it and that is why this portion, this is also a jet, this is a complete jet you can find, but portion of this jet becomes subsonic because there the velocity become reduced because you are entraining lot of air into it. So, you are increasing the mass and as a result velocity is decreasing. So, this is the subsonic portion and this region is called the supersonic portion and supersonic portion you can see. and it extends and what is the length of this supersonic code? It has been found that it is around 15 times that of the nozzle exit diameter, nozzle diameter. Okay. So, 15 times that of the nozzle diameter. So, it extends up to that. right? So, this is one of the important characteristics. Second characteristic is that uh, that is the jet entrainment uh, causes lateral expansion where the jet becomes subsonic because the entrainment, air entrainment is there and it becomes subsonic okay? and there is a lateral expansion of the oxygen jet because after taking a lot of air into it. So, this is the thing and it becomes subsonic. This is the white portion is the subsonic portion. Typical oxygen pressure used in the upstream, upstream region here basically approximately 1 mega Pascal of oxygen pressure is used okay, to produce this supersonic jet. And, uh, this is about the nozzle and one thing is that uh, we use the multi hole nozzles right. We use the multi hole nozzle to increase the bath impact area for large capacity furnace. For large capacity furnace it is not only one just uh, nozzle. You use the multi, multi hole nozzle and if I draw the plan view of the nozzle it will look like this. This is the nozzle and you have several convergent divergent nozzles are there in suite. So, number of, so number of holes, this is the, all are convergent divergent nozzle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, suppose 6 convergent divergent nozzles are there and the nozzles are configured in such a way such that they do not uh, overlap with each other because they will be independent and then basically it basically increase the total impact area of the bath. Other of single nozzle have this much impact area. If you have six nozzle and then it will have more impact area of the bath and that is required for big capacity furnace. Okay. So, there you use the multi nozzles are used. Okay. In the lens you have a single lens, but you use a not a one nozzle, you have multi nozzle system such that your impact area, impact of the oxygen jet with the 
uh, steel bath become maximized. Now let us consider this the flow through the D-level nozzle. Let us see how basically a D-level uh, D-level nozzle produces supersonic core. Not only that supersonic, the oxygen jet comes out at supersonic velocity almost at 1 ambient pressure. Okay. So, so this is the convergent divergent nozzle just have talked about it has three portion one is called the convergent section then you have a throat which is basically a cylindrical section and then there is the diverging section where basically uh, you can find out is the diverging there is the nozzle is diverging out right. Now let us see okay so equation of momentum for one dimensional compressible flow basically how let us uh, see. Um, how this type of nozzle produces a uh, supersonic oxygen jet okay, through this nozzle and uh, why it emerge at one atmospheric pressure. Okay, if we see that is the incompressible that is the equation of momentum of one dimensional incompressible flow. So, if you consider the momentum equation for one dimensional incompressible flow, we can write like this. Basically, if you consider the uh, that is your this is you have the Bernoulli's equation you have in this case only the pressure head will be there and the kinetic head there is no gravity head because it is horizontal ok. So, you can consider that is the pressure basically here a, anyway the gravity will not be very important here because it is a gas it does not make a difference uh, with the height. So, here basically the pressure drop across this nozzle anywhere any section pressure drop will be equal to the rate of change of momentum across this two point. If I consider this point to this point what is the pressure drop is basically equal to the change in momentum rate of momentum change. So, this is basically the rate of momentum change that is equal to the pressure drop. Okay. So, this is simply for one dimensional uh, compressible flow is like this An equation of continuity you can write like this basically equation of continuity you have d of that is the rate of change of rho u a basically rho u a that is that is basically d of rho u a differentiation if you can do that thing that is the continuity equation. So, d of this is equal to 0 that is the rate of change of this is the this is the mass at, at any point if you consider this point and this point. So, rho u a 1 is equal to rho u a 2 since it is a compressible flow we have to consider rho u a rho u a is the total mass rate there is the mass rate. So, mass rate at this point should be equal to the mass because mass cannot be accumulated there is a continuity equation or you can write d of rho u a that is 0 and if you expand this and divide it by throughout rho u a you will get this thing because you can just expand. So, then this is the continuity equation what you will get and uh, equation of continuity and then you can have the relationship velocity of sound is basically defined as rate of change of pressure with density and square root of that that is the definition of velocity and then if you combine all these three you can get a combined equation like this that is the du du by u u bar means basically the average velocity because in a cylindrical any 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 uh, velocity there is a distribution across the radius in any cylindrical section there is a distribution across the radius. So, u bar basically represent the average velocity. So, rate uh, change in average velocity that is du by u bar is going to m square minus 1 is all d a by a. So, now let us consider this all this section first section if you consider for a converging section let us consider this is the converging section and d a is negative why because your a is high here a is less. So, because d a a 2 here if you consider a 2 minus a 1 is negative obviously in convergence section d a is negative. So, now if you want that is the you want to accelerate the gas if you want to accelerate the gas then d u has to be positive because u 2 minus u 1 should be positive. So, this is positive and this is negative this is negative I and mean, if you want to make d u positive obviously m square minus 1 has to be negative. So, m square minus 1 if it is negative then you obviously get that is the m square minus 1 should be less than 1. So, m square m should be less than 1. So, you are getting that thing. So, if since d i is negative and you want that gas should 
accelerate that is dew should be positive so your aim has to be negative so in a convergent section if you want to have an accelerating gas in that case the velocity should be subsonic m should be less than 1 m is basically mach number m m is your m is uh, velocity of gas divided by velocity of sound so velocity of gas should be less than velocity of sound that is it will be subsonic right okay so this is okay now for a diverging converging section it is okay at cylindrical portion what will happen cylindrical portion d a is 0 d a is 0 so as a result m square minus 1 has to be 0 because du by u that is the du cannot be 0 right so m square minus 1 is equal to 0 so m is equal to 1 so in here you will attain the velocity of the sound that is the gas velocity will attain the velocity of the sound because match number is equal to 1 so here the velocity of subsonic and then in the throat region the velocity becomes sonic velocity right gas velocity becomes sonic now in the diverging section what happens is that let us see at the throat and then at diverging section what happens diverging section obviously d a is positive because a 2 is greater than a 1. So here d a is positive and if you want to make the d u to be positive then m square minus 1 has to be positive if m square minus is greater than 0 so m is greater than 1. So in this case it become a supersonic. Okay. So, it becomes a supersonic. So, m is greater than 1, it becomes a supersonic jet. So, you, we want to accelerate it that is why. Otherwise, the fluid will come to less. If m, m square is less than 1, then the, because this is positive and this is positive, m square minus 1 cannot be basically uh, negative. Okay. So, so, this is the thing. So, m will be positive here, m is greater than 1. So, here the velocity up to this is subsonic, then sonic, and in this region it will be supersonic so velocity will velocity of the gas will exceed the velocity of the sound in this region and as it goes more and more distance because you can find that is the thing and the length of the ds section now think is how we'll select the length of the ds section because as the gas is flowing and as the gas is accelerating so its velocity is increasing so as a result its pressure will be decreasing so when the gas is moving in this direction it is accelerating its uh, <coughs> pressure will correspondingly decrease and you can you can have a ds section length of the ds section you can uh, design in such a way such that when the gas emerges from the exit its pressure become exactly equal to the one atmospheric pressure so based on design you can do what will be the length of the ds section based on when the pressure uh, of the oxygen jet at the exit of the DX section should be equal to the one atmospheric pressure. Then only you can effectively uh, project the gas okay, at supersonic velocity towards the oxygen bath uh, or towards the liquid bath. Okay, so this is the thing. So that is the way you can accelerate to this. Now let us come to this jet action. Now this is the D level nozzle. So you can understand that in D level, D level nozzle or the convergent divergent type of nozzle, basically you can generate a oxygen jet with supersonic velocity and with the proper design of the DS section also you can control the pressure of the gas that is emitting in the atmosphere. So its pressure you can make it exactly one atmospheric pressure at the exit of the ds section okay so let us consider the jet action now now this is we have we have generated supersonic jet and then uh, is supersonic core along with the subsonic core finally it hits the uh, bath and make an impact okay now we need to see that is the the action of the gas jet on the liquid surface produces three distinct regimes with increase in the JFN, something is called the jet force number. That is, if you want to understand, that is the what is the impact of the oxygen jet on the liquid bath. You you should have some number to quantify the impact. That is called the jet force number, and it is defined like this: upstream gas pressure, that is approximately one megapascal, as I said, multiplied by the nozzle throat diameter, throat diameter divided by the height of the nozzle. 
that is the how close or away from the bath the nozzle is. This is the now gas pressure is constant and it is a design both of the above two parameters numerator both the parameters are design specific and it is constant. What is in your hand is the height of the nozzle that is where will keep the oxygen jet that is in your height. So, thing is that if you have a bath here this is the bath and then, then this is the oxygen lens. So, this distance this distance you can height of the nozzle this is called the height of the nozzle and this is the height of the nozzle and which you can control this is the height of the nozzle ok. So, you can you can push it up and down that is that you can take the nozzle up and down and you can change the value of H ok and you can control the JFN. So, the when you when H basically decreases JFN increases that is when the H decreases your JFN increases obviously jet force number increases and it makes a more impact on the bath right. So, that is the way the JFN number comes into picture and uh, now, dimpling the, there are three degrees because depending on jet force number you can produce the three degrees. One is called the dimpling with a slight surface depression. Now, here is the nozzle you can find this dismatch is there and then whatever is the force that is it can forms a dimple small dimple and lot of splashing of the liquid droplets away from it ok. So, a very slight depression is there in this case is a slight depression and the liquid droplets are ejected across this and then they can heat basically the refractory wall. So, this is not a very good condition. So, dimpling ok. So, liquid droplets can be ejected and then they can directly heat the refractory wall there. And then if you increase the jet force number little bit now you are increasing the jet force number then you get uh, then you get what is called uh, splashing with shallow depression it is there it is called the splashing condition with the shallow depression. It was a dimpling now we had it is the splashing with the shallow depression depression is there here it was a slight surface depression here it is the depression is more uh, compared to this compared to the dimpling a uh, splashing in case of the splashing your uh, depression is little more depression is more and here you can and the and another thing is there and finally, you can have if you further increase the JFN number then the penetration with reduction of outwardly directed splash. Now, you can find these three dimpling, splashing and the penetration. In case of the dimpling the surface depression is very less. In case of the splashing the surface depression is much higher compared to the dimpling case and in case of the penetration here you can find that is the they, they form a big cater actually lot of big cater they form on the surface and uh, your reduction of outwardly that is the this type of that is the this is basically the liquid droplets and liquid droplets are ejected away in this way. Now, here you can find here the liquid droplets are ejecting with a very small angle to the horizontal and then this droplet can directly hit the refractory wall in this case they are moving little off compared to that and they will go through the slack phase and maybe damp there in the slack phase ok. So, here basically you can find they are moving little up and in case of penetration where you can find is that in this case the liquid droplet that is the droplets are moving this way. So, they are not splashing away. So, reduction of outwardly directed splash you are just reducing the splashing thing that is the liquid droplet here here it is little move over finally, they will go and uh, reflect into the that is the heat the refractory wall and erode the refractory wall. But in this case you can find all the um, what is the droplet will basically move to the interior of the uh, furnace right through the slack phase they will move and then this thing ok. So, that is the thing there is the penetration with reduction of outwardly directed splash. So, this type of uh, depending on the JFN you can produce a that is the penetration with reduction of outwardly directly splash as we are discussing in this case that is the splashing that is the will be reduced completely and all the metal droplet will go this direction towards the center of the fart in the emulsion phase basically they will be this metal droplet will be ejected into the emulsion phase directly ok rather than they are going towards the refractory wall 
right. So, this is a very good thing, but uh, this penetration, but uh, there is the last two types behavior usually observed. You can have this or this thing, this is the mostly observed, but it has two categories that we will discuss because if your GFN is little less in this case, then, uh, uh, then the rate of generation of FU, what is there? By controlling the JFN, what you can do is that, first of all, is the splashing you want to reduce it. That is, a, this type of splashing is not desirable. You try to eject the metal droplet towards the emulsion inside the harness, not towards the refractory. Okay, that is first thing. And second thing is that, depending on the JFN, you can produce the big carrier, small carrier also. And depending on the JFN, what happens is that you two parameters are there. One that if you increase the JFN, your rate of decarburization also uh, increases. Why it increases? Because you are increasing the JFN increases means your partial pressure of oxygen is increasing because you are giving the more pressure on the uh, liquid surface. So, oxygen partial pressure become more. So, as a result, uh, your decarburization rate also become high. Okay. And at the same time, you are generating the oxygen that is the your first uh, oxidizing the iron also. You are generating the FU also and uh, your decarburization both are going on. But if your GFN is very high and then, then the case may come where the rate of decarburization is more compared to the rate of generation of, of FU. Because in that case directly oxygen can be dissolved and carbon can react and directly it can form the carbon monoxide not necessarily through the FU there is the carbon will react okay. because the partial pressure of oxygen is so high that is the oxygen can directly dissolve and it react with the carbon forming the CO gas. Okay. And in that case that is the rate of decarbonization may be higher than the rate of formation of FU. So, in that case what happens sometimes that is the slag become very dry because it is the FU that basically contribute to the form the low melting eutectic. So, if you have significant amount of FU, your the slag fluidity really increases because it forms a lot of low temperature eutectics. So, if FU decreases into the slag, then it becomes viscous and dry. That is called the drying of slag and that is not a good at all because if the slag is viscous or dried, then the mass transfer in the slag will be very less. So, you cannot effectively uh, transfer the impurities to the slag phase. So, that is called the drying. So, if JFN is very high and the cation is very big, in that case rate of decarbonation can be more than that of the FU formation and that condition is called the, 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 the that give rise to the drying situation, drying of the slag and that is called the hard blow, right. That is called a hard blow and people sometimes do it and only to increase the decarbonation to a very faster rate, okay. Otherwise, it is not justified. And in that case, you can blow little softer, you can make a very quite soft blow. In case of the soft blow, what happens? You decrease the JFN by taking away the lance from the bath. So, you can decrease the JFN and then when the JFN decreases, then your rate of formation of FU uh, become more than that of decarbonization. That is, you can build up the FU into the slag and that is sometimes is required. I will talk about that thing. That is the slag practice people do. You build up the FU by suppressing the decarburization. And this is mainly done when you have large amount of impurity like phosphorus in the liquid iron, large amount of phosphorus. So, what you have to do? You have to continue with the carbon to the end of refining. In that case, initially you do some soft blowing such that you build up the FU. And uh, because the FU buildup is very important for the CO dissolution, calcium oxide dissolution. Also, calcium do not dissolve immediately, some temperature is required. So, when the after some time when the temperature is high, FU is significant, CO easily dissolved, make the basic slag and then the phosphorus renewable starts. Anyway, all these things I will discuss. So, soft blowing is good for treating a very high phosphorus steel sometimes. And uh, that will do because initially you need to build up the FU into the slag. Okay, that is called the soft blow. Now, let us come to the kinetics of decarburization. This is very important. You can see that the rate of decarburization that is the percentage of carbon per minute with the blowing oxygen blowing time and you can see the curve is like this. So, that means here the decarburization rate that is the it is the decarburization rate basically DC DT decarburization rate that is the percentage C per minute. So, you can see initially it is fast you are removing the decarburization. So, decarburation rate increases 
okay it can increase this way or that way anyway but deconversion rate increases and then it stabilizes here this is called the steady state and then the decarburation rate decreases. You can see that it decreases and finally becomes zero. So this is a typical decarburation curve. Okay. Now if I want to understand these three regimes, one is this regime and two is the steady state regime and three is the third regime. Okay. Let's see first regime. Regime one is called the decarburation is controlled by the oxygen mass transfer. Here, here basically the rate of decarburation is controlled by oxygen mass transfer. That means you have blowing practice as a role to play because initially bath has a lot of carbon it is the oxygen so initially when you are blowing it that is you are just supplying the oxygen you are forming a few and then if your decarbonation whatever it may be so basically you are supplying the oxygen so then obviously rate of supply of oxygen is less compared to the rate of supply of carbon because you have plenty of carbon in the liquid bath and it is the oxygen supply that will control the decarburation rate. So, here you have the blowing practice as a role to play because by changing the lensing height, lens height up and down, you can change the JFN number. As a result, you can increase the decarburation or decrease the decarburation rate because you can change the that is the partial pressure of oxygen and it will respond. So, initial rate may be like this, right? Whatever is this, this is rate. It can go this way also, it can go this way and then, 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 then it can come down or it can go this way also. It can be further, that is uh, what I am trying to say is that it can go like this also, it can go like this, it can go like this also. So, in this case, that is the decarburation rate initially is very fast. So, if you do the hard blow, then your carbon decarburation rate will be very fast. If you make a soft blow, the decarburation rate may be like this or and this is a normal case. So, thing is that depending on how what JFN number that is the JFN number has a role to play for initial decarburation rate you have control. So, initially you can control the rate of decarburation by blowing practice. But here what happens in the steady state situation what happens in the steady state situation your rate of oxygen supply become equal to the rate of carbon supply. Now, carbon is depleting now. So, but still here sufficient carbon is there whatever the rate at which the you are supplying the oxygen and the rate of carbon supply is also sufficient. So, both rate become equal and then it becomes comes to a steady state situation like this. Okay. So, steady state and then what happens after this point in the third regime it is the carbon because the bath now become very depleted in carbon, carbon become very less. So, it is not the oxygen supply no more because now uh, after some blowing time you have a lot of FU into the bath. So, FU into the slag. So, your uh, oxygen supply is not a problem also plus your you know, oxygen jet is there. So, oxygen supply is plenty. Now, you are depleting in the carbon. So, it now it is the carbon uh, that is the mass transfer that basically controls the overall process here. So, here blowing practice had no role to play and uh, only blowing practice has a role to play in the first region. So, during the initial blow, you can have a jet up and down and you can control it. That is that, that has a very great effect. So, that I say that is the that is the two regime in this regime. Regime 1, you have a hard blowing and the soft blow as I said. So, hard blowing if you have a JFN number is high, but problem is there the drying of decarburization rate is very high, but the drying of slag is a problem. Okay. So, slag can get dried up, dry slag. Okay. So, this thing is there you can call it you can write this is the DC decarburization rate is very high DC DT. This is very high hard blowing and but your slag can dry slag but you have a dry slag. You can have a dry slag okay that is the two things the decarburization rate will be very high but you may have a dry slag and soft blowing soft blowing basically you have. Uh, in case of the soft blowing, you have uh, DCDT less. Okay, so DCDT less, and you have a few buildup in the slag because rate of generation of FU is much greater than rate of decarburation. So you can build up the FU into the slag and DCDT is usually less, much less in case of the soft blowing. That is the two things you can understand. Okay.
then you come the regim 2 here the decarburation in the steady state as I said and then you have regim 3 decarburation that is the decarbon controlled by the carbon supply as I said and blowing practice has no role to play. So, this is the kinetics of decarburation. Now, decarburation and the sloughing phenomena is very important phenomena what is called the sloughing in LD furnace sloughing is the phenomena where basically the emulsion emerges out of the little mouth that is called the uh, sloughing. Obviously, you do not want the sloughing because sloughing is a very uh, cumbersome phenomena and also you lose a lot of iron right. The sloughing is a phenomena when emulsion comes out of the mouth of LD causing iron loss that is called the thing and then you can find there are two heats from the industrial plant. So, you can see that is the this is this is a normal heat ETA you can say that is the first stage regime 1 that is the normal that is the decarburation rate increases and then it is almost steady state and then coming down and there is a another heat from industry itself that is not normal. You can find here the decarburation is very slow okay? and suddenly there is a sudden jump in the decarburation rate here in this location there is a sudden jump in the decarburation and then it come to a steady state and come down. And in this case basically the sloping take place, sloping take place. Why? Because if you suddenly increase the decarburation, then suddenly the foam will increase, right? Increase in height and then it can uh, come out of the little mouth, immersion can come out because it can exceed the height of the foam can exceed the height of the little and then the foam will come out foam and the emulsion come out. So, that is called the sloughing stage. So, if you have a sudden increase in the decarburation rate in the initial period that is when you have the blowing practice as a role to play okay, then um, so a, a improper blowing practice can lead to a sloughing. Think is that you have decarburation less less and suddenly you want that I have to reduce the carbon I hard blow it then it can happen. But it can also happen due to improper mixing in the bath. Usually, the ladle you can see the LD vessel, the upper part is nicely mixed up, but the lower part of the vessel is not mixed up because the momentum of the oxygen jet does not reach significantly to the lower part of the bath. As a result, there the velocity becomes less. So, what happens? They are not properly mixed up. So, as a result, the carbon may be accumulated into the lower part, they remain, they do not uh, participate in the reaction too much. And suddenly, when some liquid from the lower part comes up and comes in the upper part and participate into the decarburation and then goes into the uh, emulsion phase. So, suddenly, when the liquid from the bottom part goes to the emulsion phase and then a sudden jump into the decarburation can take place. So, if you do not have a proper mixing, then the, sometimes it can happen. There is a liquid from the lower part goes into the emulsion. They first uh, liquid, liquid are moving in the lower part and some packet comes and join the upper part of the vessel and then from there they join the emulsion phase and then sudden burst in the uh, <coughs> decarburation rate and that can give rise to the sloughing phenomena, right. So, as I said in case of the heat B, decarburation is slower initially and then after 8 minutes decarburation pick up suddenly leading to sloughing. And the reasons are one is the blowing practice because here you can do the hard blow suddenly you want to remove the carbon first you can do that but if you want to do it first it will not be fast but you can lead to a sloughing. And second thing is the insufficient mixing as I said I will talk about that thing when I will come to the hybrid blowing practice in LD that insufficient mixing also can lead to a problem. So, that part I will come to later on and then so, so lower part. So, some liquid from the lower part when suddenly joined to the emulsion phase and then they give a burst into the uh, decarburation rate because those are reaching carbon because their carbon has not been utilized lower part of the vessel has not been utilized because of lack of mixing they are not joining the upper part. So, they are very rich. So, when they suddenly come uh, into the emulsion phase then there is a bust in decarburation and uh, sloughing phenomena obviously will take place. Okay. So, these are the reference and then conclusion we can say that is the first thing is that convergent divergent nodal that is a D level nodal is used in LD lens to accelerate the oxygen jet at supersonic velocity and without any shock wave generation because when the jet emerges from the nozzle end its pressure is almost equal to the atmospheric pressure. 
So, so convergent divergent type of nozzle is required. That nozzle only ensure a immersion, a emergence of a supersonic jet, oxygen jet with pressure equivalent to the atmospheric pressure without doing any shock wave generation. And then depending on the jet action, jet action as I said you can quantify the jet action by JFN number and, and JFN number you can control it basically by the height of the lens over the liquid surface. Okay. And depending on the jet force number, there is the how, what is the intensity of impact. Depending on intensity of impact, various scatters can form. It can form, form, form a very mild to the very deep, okay, on the liquid surface. And uh, they control basically the rate of decarburation, the slag type also, initial, what type of slag you want to develop. Uh, that is the slag evolution also can be controlled by this blowing practice. Suppose you want to initially form a very, if you reach slag, then you have to make a soft glow such that your decarburation is less and you are building up the FU, right? And if you want to decarburize fast, then you can make a hard blow. You can increase the JFN by lowering the lens and then you can decarburize at a very fast rate. And in that case, rate of decarburization is greater than the FU build up in the slag, okay? So that you can do, but you have to be cautious because if you do it for a long time, then the slag can be dried up because of lack of FU into the slag. Okay, and then kinetics of decarburization uh, is categorized in three stage. As I said, in the first stage, it is uh, basically mass oxygen mass transfer control because initially you have plenty of carbon into the hot metal. So initially, the rate of decarburization is controlled by supply of oxygen. So, so in the initial part, in that part, there is the decarburization rate increases steadily, and then you can control the decarburization rate. How fast you want to increase or decrease that thing will depend on your blowing practice. So, blowing practice has a role to play. And it is flawed by a steady state uh, decarburation rate when the rate of supply and oxygen become equal. And in the third stage, it is the transfer of the, there is the mass transport of the carbon that basically controls the overall decarburation rate, right. And finally, so this is the uh, decarburation rate is very important. And uh, as I said, into the LD refining process. And uh, your blowing practice has a role to play in the initial period. So you have to be very cautious in the initial period. Uh, your uh, lensing technique or the blowing practice should be accurate. Depending on what type of slag you want to evolve for treating, what type of hot metal is coming, you can evolve a slag according to your need by changing the blowing practice. Right. And sloping in LD may take place. Sloping means, as I say, sloping means basically when the emulsion comes out of the LD uh, mouth, and that is uh, making a lot of loss, and also it is a, becomes a very cumbersome process. Sloping become a very cumbersome thing. So think is that you can stop the sloping by it can happen due to improper blowing practice or insufficient mixing in the bath. If the bath is not properly mixed, then also it can happen, or because of improper blowing practice. Okay, thank you very much.